Pataskala United Methodist Church. We are glad you are with us this morning. I'm Nikki Baker, the pastor here, and this is Jenny Hall. She is our direct, or director, sorry, our chairperson of our administrative board, and also um, she is our layperson liturgist this morning. Uh, I want to thank you all for coming to worship with us on this beautiful Sunday morning. Jenny, do you have some announcements for us today? And you cannot say no. <laughs> yes, I think so. Uh, our Kids Eat Free Summer Lunch Program is headed into its final few weeks. Uh, we want to thank you for your support and your help so far. We could still use your help on Sundays from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock to help pack lunches and from 3 o'clock to 4.30 to help with distribution. All you have to do is come show up in Beeson Fellowship Hall, and all ages are welcome. Our mission for July is the school hygiene kits, so we need soap, toothbrushes, toothpaste, deodorant, shampoo, and those should be full size, not travel size. The items can be placed in the bins either in our welcome area or there's a bin in uh, Beeson Hall under uh, the mission collection sign. Then a uh, final announcement that I have is that we're planning 
our church's 125th anniversary of ministry from this location. And Christine Hatton is leading the charge. She's shaking her head no. Oh. <laughs> okay. So stay tuned for more information on our homecoming picnic and special worship service in the coming weeks. And if you wish to help in some way, please see Christine Hatton. Christine, will you stand up just a minute? This is Christine. Stand Everyone. up, Chris. Oh, 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 sorry. Ha, ha, ha. Christine is a very dear friend of mine. I would not pick on just anybody. Okay. Uh, would you please stand now for our call to worship? God, we come to you with voices raised and spirits high. We are knocking on your door. We are knocking on your door. For everyone who asks, receives, and everyone who searches, finds. For everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Let us worship God who opens doors. This is a responsive opening prayer. God of open doors, we give you thanks with our whole hearts for the opportunity to be together today. Though we could have been elsewhere, we are glad we're here. Though we could have been with others, we are glad to be with these people surrounding us now. Though we would have been with you or you with us, no matter where we might have chosen to be, we're glad to meet you in this place of worship this morning. Your name is holy, O God. We call it out together. Gracious God, risen Christ, Holy Spirit, we are here at your doorstep. Amen. You may be seated. Our first lesson for this morning is from Colossians 2, verses 6 to 15. And I have a brief question because I have more than through 15 printed out here. Anyway, I'll read what's here. This is also from the message, uh, not from the New Revised Standard that's in your pews. My counsel for you is simple and straightforward. Just go ahead with what you've been given. You received Christ Jesus, the Master. Now live him. 
You're deeply rooted in him. You're well constructed upon him. You know your way around the faith. Now do what you've been taught. School's out. Quit studying the subject and start living it. And let your living spill over into thanksgiving. Watch out for people who try to dazzle you with big words and intellectual double talk. They want to drag you off into endless arguments that never amount to anything. They spread their ideas through the empty traditions of human beings and the empty superstitions of spirit beings. But that's not the way of Christ. Everything of God gets expressed in him so you can see and hear him clearly. You don't need a telescope, a microscope, or a horoscope to realize the fullness of Christ and the emptiness of the universe without him. When you come to him, that fullness comes together for you too. His power extends over everything. Entering into this fullness is not something you figure out or achieve. It's not a matter of being circumcised or keeping a long list of laws. No, you're insiders. Not through, oops, wait a minute, sorry. Do, 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 do. You're already in, insiders. Not through some secretive initiation rite, but rather through what Christ has already gone through for you, destroying the power of sin. If it's an initiation ritual you're after, you've already been through it by submitting to baptism. Going under the water was a burial of your old life. Coming up out of it was a resurrection God raising you from the dead as he did Christ. When you were stuck in your old, sin-dead life, you were incapable of responding to God. God brought you alive right along with Christ. Think of it. All sins forgiven, the slate wiped clean, that old arrest warrant canceled and nailed to Christ's cross. He stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their sham authority at the cross and marched them naked through the streets. So don't put up with anyone pressuring you in details of diet, worship services, or holy days. All those things are mere shadows cast before what was to come. The substance is Christ. Don't tolerate people who try to run your life ordering you to bow and scrape, insisting that you join their obsession with angels and that you seek out visions. They're a lot of hot air. That's all they are. They're completely out of touch with the source of life, Christ, who puts us together in one piece, whose very breath and blood flow through us. He is the head and we are the body. We can grow up healthy in God only as he nourishes us. I want to invite the kiddos to come up this morning and sit right here if you want to come. Are you going to come up today? Oh, here we come. Awesome. Just sit right there. My, you all are growing up so fast. So fast. What do you have to do to grow up? Eat carrots? <laughs> Just carrots? And broccoli? Broccoli too. Broccoli too. What else? Carrots. Carrots, uh-huh. Asparagus, uh-huh. What else? Bananas? Mm-hmm. And what about strawberries? Blueberries? Yeah? Plates. 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 
and we put them on our plates. And pickles? Sandwich. A sandwich. Yes, we got to eat a sandwich. So to grow up, we have to eat, eat food. What else do we do to grow up? When we eat fruits and vegetables, it makes our bodies grow big and strong. Does everybody agree with that? Yes. yes, very good. And we drink lots of water, and we drink milk, and, and we make sure that we get good rest at night, right? And we sleep good. And all of these things make us grow up strong and healthy, right? Well, did you know that also when we are coming to church and when mommy and daddy are teaching you how to pray before you go to bed and how to pray for friends and your family, that that's a way that you're growing up in Jesus. Did you know that? And so just like we need good food to give us nourishment and make us strong, mommy and daddy help us to learn, and our friends at church help us to learn how to get spiritual nourishment and to grow up in Jesus and be strong in Jesus. Because as a church, we are the body of Christ and Christ is the head. And we know that our heads tell us how to move our feet, how to move our hands, how to eat and get, get nourishment to be strong, right? And so I wanted you to remember today that while you're eating your fruits and vegetables to be grow up and be strong in your bodies, that our prayers and reading the Bible stories that mommy and daddy read to you to teach you about God, to teach you how Jesus came, and to teach you how you are loved. All of those things help you grow up in Jesus. So today, I thought I would give you something to help you remember that. Oh boy. Now, this says there's a little paper on it, and it says Christ is the head, and we are the body. We can grow up healthy in God only as He nourishes us. So, I want you to think about that every time you eat your food, but also every time you pray, and every time mommy and daddy are teaching you about God. They are giving you spiritual food to help you grow up in Jesus. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for feeding us so our bodies are strong and healthy. And thank you for feeding us With your, scripture, with your scripture, so we can be, so we can be strong, in our strong in our spirit. We love you, God. Love Thanks, for loving us. Thanks for loving us. Amen. Amen. All right, friends. Um, would you do me a favor? Would you take this to Nora? Back, way back there. Would you take that back to her? See where Miss Kelly is? Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Sean. That was beautiful. This morning, we are going to start the pastoral prayer with the Lord's Prayer. So if you would join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us pray. God of all things, all times and all places, we have come not only to praise and worship, but also to bring our petitions. We know that we are yours and that you will always open the door to us, just as you taught us, so we have prayed. Give us this day our daily bread, O Holy One. For some in our midst are hungry. Some here know what it is like to miss a meal. For those of us who do not know hunger, may we open ourselves, open our kitchen doors and our cabinets. Lord, we pray. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Though we know how difficult this can be. Merciful God, let us not define ourselves or our relationships by greed. Keep us from holding grudges out of anger and frustration. Release us from the tyranny of keeping score. Lord, we pray. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil because we cannot manage this on our own. Whether we are tempted to drink, use drugs, gamble, speak too much, or speak too little, whether we are tempted to ignore the pain of others or even our own, allow us to turn down the noise, the noise of our lives enough to hear you knocking at the door. Lord, we pray. We give you thanks for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. Though we walk in the midst of trouble, you stretch out your hand and you deliver us and all of your beloved children. We know that we are yours and that when we knock, you will always open the door for us. Therefore, in Jesus' name, we lift our prayers to you. Amen.
Would you please rise for the reading of our gospel lesson this morning? Found in the gospel of Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 13, again from the message paraphrase. One day he was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said, Master, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. So he said, When you pray, say, Father, reveal who you are. Set the world right. Keep us alive with three square meals. Keep us forgiven with you and forgiving others. Keep us safe from ourselves and the devil. Then he said, imagine what would happen if you went to a friend in the middle of the night and said, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. An old friend traveling through just showed up and I don't have a thing on hand. The friend answers from his bed, don't bother me. The door's locked. My children are all down for the night. I can't get up to give you anything. But let me tell you, even if he won't get up, because he's a friend, if you stand your ground, knocking and waking all the neighbors, he'll finally get up and get you whatever you need. Here's what I'm saying. Ask, and you'll get. Seek, and you'll find. Knock, and the door will open. Don't bargain with God. Be direct. Ask for what you need. This is not a cat and mouse hide and seek game we're in. If your little boy asks for a serving of fish, do you scare him with a live snake on his plate? If your little girl asks for an egg, do you trick her with a spider? As bad as you are, you wouldn't think of such a thing. You're at least decent to your own children. And don't you think, The Father who conceived you in love will give the Holy Spirit when you ask him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let's pray. God of wisdom, you promise to give your spirit to those who ask. Overwhelm us with your word that we may know you more fully, love you more deeply, and follow you more intentionally. Amen. So we are in, I believe, the third week of our sermon series, Stamp, Action Required. And our action required this week is be persistent in prayer. And this week, our scripture lesson, our gospel lesson from Luke, has in it specifically a prayer that the Christian church everywhere, um, multiple denominations, We pray this prayer that we call the Lord's Prayer to help guide us and keep us united in the way that we pray. So it's it's good this week that our action required reminds us that one of our actions that is needed in our faith growth is to be persistent in prayer. Now, I know that most of us at one time or another have been to a place like Target or Walmart or Kroger or any grocery store, right? And for some of us, though, it's maybe been a while. And so you might not have seen this for a bit. 
as a parent is going through the store with the child and the child is either in the cart reaching for all of the sugary uh, cereal boxes or whatever treats they can find and trying to pull them in the cart or walking alongside holding on to the cart mommy daddy i want i want i want i want i want i want and you get to walk down the aisle saying yeah i remember that how many of you had a parent who used to strike up the dance get it going and then they'd spin down the aisle and they'd start singing you can't always get what you want now i know i've talked about this before but you know this is something this is something that we all experience as a child and as an adult we want something we want something whether it's because it looks fancy or pretty or yummy we want it and we ask for it but we don't get it has this ever happened to you oh good okay it's hard when we ask for something but we don't get what we want and a lot of times we think that when we are being persistent in prayer we are called to ask God for what we want. God, I would like an air fryer and a Corvette. <laughs> Those go together. I would like to visit name said place i would like to visit australia sans spiders so could you please get rid of the spiders before i go all of these things that i ask for are things that i want but our scripture today says starting at verse 9 jesus says here's what i'm saying ask and you'll get seek and you'll find knock and the door will be open if we stop there i should have a corvette right a red one that goes fast but jesus continues on and he says in your asking don't bargain with god god if you fill in the blank then i'll fill in the blank god if you just let me get through this moment i'll go to church every sunday god if you help me in this area then I'll be the most devoted prayer warrior. This is bargaining with God. But if we look before again, ask and you'll get, seek and you'll find, knock and the door will open. Anything I ask for, anything I want. But Jesus continues in his scripture, he says, or in his words, he says, don't bargain with God, be direct and then here's the one it just ruins it ask for what you need oh but i really want that corvette with the license plate that says rev mom i've dreamt of it for a long time Do I need it? <laughs> Rick, I like you. <laughs> we're, good, we're good friends. Rick says, yes, you need it. You do, you need it. Rick, so I can get to the places I need to go faster, right? 
All right. Do I need do I need all of the things that I want? No. As a matter of fact, could all of the things that I want complicate my life in such a way that they actually might make my life more difficult? Yep. Could they be things that are bad for me? Sure. Well, if I'm, if, if I'm allergic to something, like almonds, but all I want to eat is almonds, if I eat the almonds, is that good for me? But they taste so good. Still not good for me. Jesus continues on and he says, If your little boy asks for a serving of fish, do you scare him with a live snake on his plate? I hope not. If your little girl asks for an egg, do you trick her with a spider? Had better not. And then Jesus says, As bad as you are, as sinful as we are as human beings, We would never think of such a thing because we're at least decent to our own children. So don't we think the Father who conceived us in love will give the Holy Spirit when you ask him? What is it that we need, friends? We need the gift of the Holy Spirit Why do we need the gift of the Holy Spirit? Because life on our own is very swervy. Life without the guidance and the love and the filling up of love of the Holy Spirit in us, we can't can't drive straight on that life. I might get there fast in my Corvette, but I'm going to get lost along the way. The Holy Spirit is the gift that we need. And the Holy Spirit grows in us the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of of the spirit that we have talked about love peace patience kindness goodness gentleness faithfulness and self-control and friends joy joy Because the Holy Spirit is the comforter. The Holy Spirit is the counselor. The one who leads us and guides us and shows us the truth and the way. When we ask for the Holy Spirit, we get the Holy Spirit. When we seek the Holy Spirit, we will find the Holy Spirit. When we knock on the door... The door will be opened and the Holy Spirit is there for us to guide us, counsel us, lead us, and show us the way of love. It's very difficult in a time and in a world where everything is opposing. We've talked about that. This or that, right or wrong. It's so hard. School, work, neighborhoods, relationships, even in church. But friends, the one gift that we need and when we ask for, we shall receive is the unifying gift of the Holy Spirit. The verses from Colossians today, where we talked um, and shared with the, 
the children that he, Christ is the head and we are the body. And we grow up healthy only in God as God nourishes us. All our sins are forgiven. The slate is wiped clean. All old arrest warrants canceled and nailed to Christ's cross. Christ has destroyed the power of sin. In us is the love of Christ that brings unity to the body. So in prayer, when we pray, Christ doesn't call us to ask for things like the red Corvette with the vanity plates or even the air fryer. Christ calls us in prayer to be persistent in asking for the gift of the Holy Spirit that unites us in love, that brings peace, not just to our hearts, but to the community and the world around us, to the relationships around us. Because as we ask our Father for nourishment, He gives us not what we want, but what we need. So friends, the action required of a disciple is to be persistent in prayer. We pray the Lord's Prayer every week together. But as you pray when you rise in the morning, as you pray over your meals, as you pray throughout your day, and at night before you go to bed, asking, seeking, knocking, and waiting, expecting the response and the gift of the Holy Spirit is our work. And the gift of the Holy Spirit is the unifying love of Jesus Christ that is present in each and every one of us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Jesus teaches us that if we ask, it will be given to us. Let us participate in God's purpose by giving generously for all who are in need. We invite you to give of yourself by placing your tithe or offering in the wooden boxes by the doors as you exit, or give online at pataskalaumc.org by clicking on the Give button and following the instructions there. Will you pray with me? Holy God, we give you thanks for your steadfast love and faithfulness. Bless these offerings and transform them into gifts of hospitality for those who need them most. Amen.
received this blessing. Be persistent in prayer. Friends, what we know now is only a shadow of what is to come. The love of Christ. Go out and open doors. Shine the light of Christ's love into the shadows. Amen.